Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about cookies and web caching. So in the previous lecture we, uh, we looked at how HTTP is, is a stateless protocol and this stateless uh, nature of HTTP helps you, helps you open a lot of tabs on your browser. But then there are some websites which want to maintain state. So how do you, how do you work with HTTP but still maintain state? The one way to get around this stateless nature of HTTP is to use uh, cookies. So cookie to any to use a cookie, what what is done is there is a cookie header line added in the HTTP response message as well as the request message, and then a cookie is a file that kept is is kept at the user's host and it's managed by the user's browser, and then the websites at the backend they have some records they have a backend database which have some record about <coughs> about you. So let's look at a, a concrete example. So Susan always accesses the internet through a PC. So she visits some e-commerce website for the first time. You can pick any e-commerce website for your exam, for your that you like. Let's consider Amazon.com. So when she first visits Amazon.com, her initial HTTP, she sends an initial HTTP request. When the HTTP request arrives at Amazon.com, what Amazon is going to do is going to create a unique ID and she's and it, that is going to be sent in the SP, HTTP response message back to Susan. And an entry is going to be created at the backend database for that particular ID. Okay, so let's look at an animated <coughs> way as, as to how that works. So let's assume that this client has already visited eBay, and so there is some cookie file in the client's computer for eBay. Now this client is <coughs> is visiting Amazon.com. So first, this is the first time this client is visiting Amazon.com. It sends the first HTTP request message to Amazon.com. So what? <coughs> so that's the server. What the server is going to do is going to create a cookie. It's going to in, send and create an entry at the backend database, and then the ID that has been created for this user is say one six seven eight. Then a HTTP response message is going to be sent, and then with this header information like set cookie one six seven eight. When this HTTP response message is received by this client, it's going to create uh, this uh, file or this entry in its uh, in its local computer. So now let's assume that this client at a later time access Amazon.com once again. What it's going to do is it's, it's going to send this request <coughs> message, but this time, unlike the first time when it visited Amazon.com and did not have a cookie, now has a cookie. So it's going to send that this is the cookie. So what <coughs> as soon as that information reaches the server, the server accesses the, the database and pulls that information related to this particular client and then sends the response message back. So <clears throat> one week later, if the if the client once again accesses uh, Amazon.com, the same thing is going to <coughs> happen. It's going to send the usual HTTP uh, request message, but this time it once again is going to send this cookie. So it does not matter how much later the user accesses it back you still have this cookie information saved in your computer and that's just going to be used uh, by the backend database to get some specific information about the user. Now, so the thing is, what are cookies useful for? One thing is they get, the UK, they can help store user state information, which HTTP does not allow. So they get very useful for authorization. One, one very useful uh, nature for cookies is shopping carts. And they're also used for recommendations and other stuff like that. And the why cookies were invented is because HTTP is stateless and they want to maintain some state about the user. You want to keep some information about that user and cookies help maintain that state. So cookies are great, but of course, you'll, uh, cookies help. There are issues with cookies and privacy. Cookies permit websites to know a lot of information about you and they may also supply some of your information to some other third parties like your name and email. So cookies are have their controversial uh, side as well. So, so much so about cookies, we'll now move over to something of called web caches and how they improve performance. So, so the goal here is to satisfy uh, a, server, a client's request without actually going to the origin server. So what happens is there is something called a proxy server which caches this information. And the goal, the, the reason why you don't want to go to the origin server is maybe the origin server is located far from you, that is the client. And you want to also reduce the load in the internet. So you want to have 
good performance like both throughput and delay, you want to get the information as closer to you as possible. So let's see how caching works. First, there is this proxy cache and this client is requesting something. Send the HTTP request message to the proxy cache. Now what the proxy cache does is it sends it forwards this uh, HTTP request message to the origin server. The origin server is then going to send HTTP response message and that is going to be sent back to the client. Now when this information comes, this proxy server is going to cache that information. And, <clears throat> and how is that useful? Because next time, say this client here sends an HTTP request message, it does not forward it to the origin server. It does not do that. It just has the information and so it just sends an HTTP response message back to this client. So this client, when, when a client accesses it for the second time, what happens, it, it gets a much faster response. So this is why web caches are used. So, so caches, the, one of the most important things is caches act as both client and server. They can both uh, serve, they have this uh, capability of acting both like a client and server. And they're typically installed by ISPs or the university or company so, so that you, most requests can be satisfied locally and you do not have to go all the way to the origin server to get your request. And also, if it's installed by an ISP, it makes sure that traffic does not leave the ISP and go to uh, some other ISP and it can have a lot of economic benefits apart from just performance benefits. So the reason why web caching, it helps reduce request resp <coughs> response time for a client. Therefore, so it, it reduces delay, it can also increase throughput. It can reduce traffic on an institution's access link. As I said, that if you could serve most of your requests locally, the request does not have to leave, your, uh, leave the institution or the ISP. So it doesn't, you, you can reduce the traffic on that access link and hence save a lot of money. And the internet is dense with caches. There are caches all over. And this is basically helps to, helps to give superior performance. If there were no caches in the internet, the performance of the internet would have been much uh, worse than what it is today. So with this, I'll uh, conclude today's lecture. Thank you for watching.